Well, here we are. The season finale of The Performers I Know. And I gotta tell you, I've had a lot of fun with this first season. We had a lot of laughs, and we learned a lot about the 13 performers that I interviewed. You know, I think season two is going to be great. It's going to be even better. We're going to have a lot more new guests, a lot of fun, and a lot of laughs, too. And I just want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen every week to this episode. Without further ado, here is episode number 13, my special guest, Shannon Ship. Episode 13 of The Performers I Know, coming at you. These are the performers I know, I know. These are the performers I know. These are the performers I know, I know. These are the performers I know. These are the performers I know. These are the performers I know. I know. These are the performers I know. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the performers I know. This is episode number thirteen, the season one finale, if you will. And boy, when I tell you the guest that I have today from Studio Pennsylvania. I am very excited about this. I've worked with her for many years and she is a very talented individual, a broadwayworld.com nominated person to be exact, but we'll get to that in a minute. Right here is my special guest, Miss Shannon Ship. Shannon, welcome to the show. Hi, Dane, thank you so much. No problem. So, ladies and gentlemen, as you hear the studio dog barking in the background, once upon a time, around 2018, 2019, I went to see a show called Cheaper by the Dozen at the Somerset Valley Play Playhouse. Now, I had went originally to support another person that I was working with. Her name is Dari. And amongst... The people in the cast was a performer named Shannon Ship. She had a small role. However, what stuck out to me is during the performance, the gentleman who was playing the lead role, his name escapes me, he got stuck in what I like to call a logic loop, where everybody was just circling back and forth with the lines. And I'm sitting there going, oh my lord, they somebody somebody does not know their cue or somebody's missing their line and who steps in the mvp shannon got the boat righted got everybody back on course and i just remember going you see that one right there yeah yeah talent that's talent had do you so shannon my um my first question to you is uh, what got you interested in acting and performing? How did you get bitten by the uh, theater bug? Okay, so when I was in first grade, I um, I started with singing. Um, I guess that was like my my first original talent, and I I started in voice lessons because my parents thought, oh, that's gonna go somewhere. So. Uh, I was singing before I could read and I worked with someone um, and they had a connection to Ryder University in New Jersey and they said hey have you ever tried musical theater and I said no what is that so after she told me of a little performance called White Christmas I auditioned there and got the lead role of Susan in the musical. Um, and I thought it was just going to be something I tried out. And I fell in love with it, quite honestly. And it made me want to do it for the rest of my life. It was just an amazing 
experience, an amazing feeling. And um, I, I love just watching, making people happy and, and just giving them that joy. That's lovely. Do you know what I was doing in the first grade? I was what? I was eating my boogers and sticking crayons in my ear. So you <laughs> you were way ahead of the game on me. <laughs> so after that first performance of Cheaper by the Dozen, I did something that I very rarely do. I went to see the show again to approach Shannon's parents and say, hey, I have my own theater group and I would love to have Shannon be in one of my shows. And they said yes. Uh, fast forward a little bit, and my young Sherlock Holmes project, The Caper at Christmas. Now, originally, Shannon had the role of Amaryllis, the best friend of the main character, Grace Duvall. Mm -hmm. However, the girl playing Grace Duvall decided to just drop out. But we're not going to get into that right now. So I looked at my uh, situation and went, you know, Shannon's a very capable actress. I'm just going to give her a little promotion to the lead role. And as I recall, Shannon, apparently you freaked out after I called your mom and, and offered you the lead role. I do remember that, yes. <laughs> I was yeah. very excited. That was only my second play. Cheaper by the Dozen was my first play. Well, I mean, I thought I technically it was your third. If uh, White Christmas wouldn't that be considered? Well, or are we, are we talking semantics here? Well, I'm talking like that was a musical. As in terms of like just a play, that was like my first. Oh right, yeah, yeah. That's... So I, I was just really excited. I'm glad you were here to correct me on that. Well, I don't know what I would do without you. <laughs> see, see, there you go. See, you got the logical cut. There we go. So we had this play go off. We were in two festivals. And Shannon just did amazing, as did the cast. The whole cast was just lovely. And I really knew then and there that I wanted Shannon to just be in as many of my shows as humanly possible because she's so very, very talented. Thank we you. fast forward to 2020 and the Coviticals, as it were, and just the, as I've said before, I thought I was, my goose was cooked because it's like, well, no one is doing anything now Theaters are shut down. What am I going to do? Mm -hmm. But then came the lifeline of, hey, virtual theater. Nobody has to go anywhere. You could just plop down in your chair or sip some cocoa and do your shows. And there we go. And Shannon did a multitude of shows. Actually, I think she might be, she might be the most, have the most credits in my virtual shows since 2020. Um, one of which was a small little scene called Daniel, my brother. And uh, Shannon has a lot to say about that, I would imagine. This project spanned about three years because it was different I mean, well, first of all, Shannon, when you read the script, what was your first impression of it? I just remember reading it, and I remember just, like, remember, I just remember, like, I read it, I looked up, took a breath, and I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like, it was, I do remember thinking this is, like, one of the best things you have ever written, and I was so excited. Everything else was just straight up garbage. No, just... no, no, no. <laughs> uh, I just, I, I loved it. I loved the message. I loved what I like the possibilities I could do with it. I, everything about it just screamed, "This is awesome." Yes, I know. We've, I've, I'm, technically, we've talked about this before because there is video, well, audio footage of Shannon and I discussing the entire 
history of this play. But to reiterate, for those of you who don't know, I this was originally for a uh, virtual showcase of scenes. And as most often happens when I'm doing these kind of things, this, the showcase just kind of went boop, and the person just stopped responding to me. And because they had asked me to write a scene dealing with the themes that were in it. And when they said, oh, did you have an actress in mind to play the Shannon Chip? Shannon Chip. And the guy was just like, oh, you've given this some thought, haven't you? Yes, I have. <laughs> and it was one of the most grueling in a positive way scenes that I've ever done. Like usually when I finish recording a scene, it's just like, okay, all right, I'll see you guys later. But after Daniel, my brother, this was a live recording. I had to actually mute my mic because I was crying from how, just how wonderful it went. It was absolutely amazing. And uh, things just took off from there. And to show, ladies and gentlemen, just how much faith I have in Shannon, just how much I trust her, because I don't trust many performers. In Scene Showcase 2, back in September of 2020, Shannon became the only other person ever, 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 to not only write a scene for my scene showcase, but to direct it as well. And it was called Friendship Can Die. And I believe, Shannon, there's a little bit of a backstory to how this was created. Yeah, I believe um, for that one, I was writing a show called Love Next Door. Uh, and this was this was like my first show, I think I was in the process of writing. Uh, and I just, I, I wrote it and I was about, I was about at the halfway mark when Dane came to me about scene showcases and he, you were the one, I believe, who, who recommended, Hey, what if you, uh, performed a scene? You think it would be good? And I went, well, I don't know. I don't know if it would be good, but, uh, I do, I do remember that that was something I was interested in and, that was like the first thing I directed and I thought it went well. I really, I really liked it. Yes. Uh, you and Rhett Drennan together mm -hmm. did a fantastic job. I've actually been trying to get in touch with Rhett for a future episode, but he's been very busy with his, uh, his music stuff, which is very, very awesome. I, I highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah. Shannon has the unique distinction of being the only other person in scene showcase history who actually directed and wrote a scene uh, for this. It's, so it's a very, it's a very small list. You should be very proud. I know I am. I'm so very proud. Oh, I thank promise, you. <laughs> I promised myself I wouldn't cry. So I won't. Because <laughs> crying is for the weak. No. No, not really. No, I not really. I can't. I can't back that. Now, the one, I think one of my favorite, well, actually, two of my favorites, uh, early Shannon showcases of her talent came in the form of the. Well, one of them was the Guardian Game. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, this was another one where I wrote the uh, script and I looked at it and went. You know, this Mindy character, I can't see anybody else doing it but Shannon. Because, quite frankly, the fact that Shannon is able to play off of all the wacky characters that I did in that show is just a testament to her talent. Now, what, Shannon, what does it really... What do you think it takes in terms of, you know, keeping a straight face and just rolling with the punches when someone's acting all wax cadaisical like I was playing those different crazy uncles. 
Well, I had, let me just say, I had the best experience with that show. Uh, I remember you talking about it and every, every character just got crazier. Um, I just, when I was acting through it, I just remembered like thinking of it as realistically as possible. Like there are people who act like this. Um, and as funny as it is, you know, it had rehearsals where I remember we would do a little bit of Daniel, my brother, um, you know, which was just sad and dark. Um, and then to lighten us up afterwards, we would do the Guardian game, which was playful and funny. Uh, and I remember that. And I remember just being able to laugh at it then. But then when we got into the characters to do the show, it was like, oh, my gosh, this this girl has such a dilemma and all of these crazy uncles are ridiculous um but I mean to look at it in a serious light was how I kind of kept a straight face like Mindy wouldn't just burst out loud laughing she would just be like oh my gosh what am I doing who's the right person to choose everyone is worse and worse so I think she she really she was because she was a very like adult character seeing that her parents had had passed and she was really trying to do what was best for her, which was like such a mature thing at her age. Mm -hmm. And I remember trying to to go off of that and trying to really be her character. Well, I, I can't remember which uncle it was where you were just could not pronounce the name. So you would just do a very exaggerated. Was it Mortimer? Yes, it was. It was. Um, so, you, so for those of you who who want to know, Shannon would just go, Uncle Mortimer. <laughs> it, it, yes, yes, Shannon, that's how you pronounce it. Mortimer. That is how I, it. I could not get that name right for the longest time. <laughs> for the longest time. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I did feel bad about it. I did apologize. Like after every single scene, I was like, I'm so sorry. Yeah. You know, I, I it took me about seven years to forgive you, but oh. gosh darn it, I finally did. Yeah, I'm still trying to forgive myself on that one. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Mm -hmm. Well, the one, another thing about Shannon that really I just absolutely love is the is her being able to roll with the punches and just jump into roles with very little notice because there's been two occasions where I've had to ask Shannon to jump into a role where a person just decided not to show up. Uh, there was a particular uh, young Sherlock Holmes adventures, which was mm -hmm. basically just three vignettes with young Sherlock Holmes. And in one of the segments, a woman who was supposed to be doing the a specific character just decided, I'm going to no call, no show. Oh, fantastic. So I'm scrambling around. I'm calling everybody I know. This, I called about three or four people, and they were all like, oh, sorry, I'm Bruiser. So I'm like, oh, my God. I, I don't know what to do. I call Shannon, and she's just like, yeah, send me the script. I'll do it. <laughs> and by God, she acted the crap out of that one. Mm, that one was fun. Yes. You got to play a little bit. Your character was older than you were at the time. So it was just. It was. I remember I was at dinner and my mom's like, um, Dane called. Uh, he wants you to jump in for a show. And I went, yeah, OK, I'll mm. I'll do that. Uh, I okay. Got it. OK. <laughs> The same thing happened with Taylor Made Hero. Yes, yeah, Dan. the lead gal just she vanished. Don't know what happened to her. Don't really care for that matter. She just stopped. Well, her mother stopped replying to emails, and I'm emailing, 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 going, "Hey, so are you recording this or not?" Nothing. So uh, once again, it was like, oh, Shannon, Shannon, <laughs> Miss Ship, if you would be so kind. Oh, that one was a nightmare because mm -hmm. I had like 27 people record separately and I had to 
stitch every single one of you together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, I guess the next question then, with that in mind, is um, do you take it as a sort of challenge to jump into a role with little notice, or is it more? Would you prefer? I suppose this is a silly question. Would you prefer to have a little more time to kind of digest a character? I think it depends. I like doing both. Um, having the experience with doing both. Because um, there's been some characters, like the one I had for three years in Daniel, my brother, where I, you know, got to process the character, study her, become her, and, and know all about her. And then there was a Taylor made hero where I just got to jump in and have a lot of fun with it, even though... Um, I didn't know the character as well. And by doing that, I just, I used instinct. Um, and I I got to have, I, I get to have a lot of fun with doing that kind of stuff. And I remember even, even then you were like, oh, that's great. I mean, which, you know, was good for me. Glad, I'm glad I was doing my job in the right well, way. There was actually one point where I had to mute my mic because I was cracking up. Because there's a, part where the princess beats up a bunch of little goblins yeah. and Shannon just was really into it like <laughs> you're gonna be in a world of pain <laughs> and I just remember I was I muted my mic and I'm laughing and I just heard Shannon go Dane where'd you go Are you still <laughs> like I'm, I'm here that was just too hysterical for words <laughs> Yeah, I love the comedy. Um, I'd say I love both. I if I had to prefer one, if I had to, because I love I love it. If I had to prefer one, I would say probably studying the character for as much time as I could, especially if it's a deeper character. If it's a more comedic character, I'm I'm all into doing instinct and like yeah, practice. We did get to practice that a bit, but then just using instinct and having fun with it is is something that I like it's yeah you know the one of the things that I do like is how Shannon just you can tell she's one of those performers that really likes you can tell she's having fun with her role um and that I think shined through when you did our American Tale reading as Bridget the Irish mm -hmm. mouse oh yes <laughs> yes and I remember I had I was like all right let me audition a couple of girls and see and you know everybody was nobody was doing the accent and then Shannon was just like uh, let me try the accent oh Tony this is grand like oh okay yeah you got it All right, <laughs> stuff. I yeah I did not know an Irish brogue I literally had to learn it for that role um I <laughs> I just went with it. I um that is still the line I use today to get into roles. Like, oh Tony, isn't it grand? Like I just I <laughs> I love doing accents and learning new things because I know it will help me. It was just like I remember watching that movie like a million times trying to get these these lines down with the accent. Well, you know, it's funny because you got paired up with Red again. And yeah. he had to learn to do a Brooklyn accent because he's from Tennessee. That's true. And I was just like, okay, well, he learned to do a Brooklyn accent. She learned to do an Irish accent. I guess uh, I guess I should pat myself on the back telling yeah. people that uh, they were able to... I was able to get people to do their uh, accents and whatnot. Yeah, it's the capability of your actors. They just redid it. Well, another capability that Shannon has is the ability to act against herself. Um, in particular, playing not just a teenage version of herself, but the older version of herself when she did Things Will Be Okay. Yeah. Donna. yeah. That one was definitely one of the hardest roles I think I've ever had to do. Well, you know, it's funny because... What I think it's a testament to your abilities. You actually changed your voice slightly, but yeah. just enough where it's like, oh, this is teenage Donna, and that's adult Donna. Yes. So 
Yes, good on you for that. Thank you. Yeah, I remember that that process was really hard. I I had I had to practice that one so much, and we learned later that it it took like a lo- I had to pause a little longer because we didn't like just separately record those lines and paste them together. We like did it all in one take, and it I had to just do younger me take a pause, change, and go older me, and that. Well, yeah. as I recall, I gave you the option of, okay, we can record teenage Donna's lines and then record older Donna's lines. And you were just like, no. No, I'm not going to. I think it helped doing it straight through, knowing that like kind of helped me with the difference in the voices. Mm-hmm. So, yes. as I Well, as I mentioned in the beginning of this episode, Shannon is a BroadwayWorld.com nominee actress because eventually with Daniel, my brother, and then uh, finding the lost and then the loss of a brother, all three of those scenes were combined into one three-act play called Daniel, my brother. And after a three-year odyssey, a three-year workshop period, we were able to get it done in a theater. And I found out that BroadwayWorld.com was doing their annual awards ceremony. And Daniel, my brother, just so happened to fall into the time period in order to be nominated. Like, okay. So I sent in the nomination for Shannon for Best Actress in a Play off off Broadway. It's like, all right, you know, it's got to see what happens. And just sure enough, I see the list of nominees and I came out and there was Shannon nominated. So, how you know, how does it feel knowing that you got nominated? I mean, I know it's not the Tony Awards, but still the nomination is a nomination. How did that make you feel? Just so supported. And it was really... It was it was great. I was so happy. Um, I I got to see like the love and support and just the thanks for what I do. And I knew it was it was worth it. And I. I just loved doing it. But to see my name up there was just so awesome. Yes. I mean, we we actually we did pretty well. Yeah. I got to I'm not sure. I'm actually looking at the stats here. Oh wait, they they got rid of, they got rid of the voting things. But listen, we got we got some percentage of the vote, and at one point Shannon was in second place. So you know people were people were paying attention, people were listening. I was in first place at one point, but then the machines started working, and well, we won't get into that right now. But <laughs> um, yes, so. It's really been amazing. And I couldn't think of a better person to interview to wrap up this first season of the performance I know. And, you know, what, when it comes really down to it, a lot of people have said to me, oh, Dane, you know, you should be very proud. Your shows are so good. And I, what I often say is, you know, a director or a writer is only as good as the performers who do his work. And I, that really... Um, I really feel the biggest example is Shannon because she is extremely talented. And I firmly believe um, that she will beat Audra McDonald's record for most Tony Awards. She's going to get like 100 of them. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. That- I actually don't. How many, how many did she win? I don't even know. She has like, what, 12 of them? I don't I know. Remember. I can't remember. But she has a lot of them. <laughs> But Shannon's going to get more of them. Anyway, we are looking at the clock on the wall. We are almost out of time. But Shannon, my final question to you, as I always ask of my guests, um, if somebody were to come up to you and say, Shannon, I'm thinking of going into the acting business, the theater business, what kind of advice would you give that person um, to help them succeed? Well, I would say that Hard work means a lot. 
Um, and just to put yourself fully into a character to love it um, and believe in it. And I think, you know, to believe is, is probably the biggest thing, because if you put your mind to it, then and work hard for it. Anything is possible. That's very true. It's yeah. very true. It's always it's always very interesting to hear the uh, answers to this question because several people have given me very different answers, but that's okay because they're all great answers and they're all great performers, just like Shannon is. Th Shannon, thank you very, very much for joining thank you. me today. Thank yes. you so much for having me. No problem. As the as the outro music takes us away. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for listening all for season one. Season two will be coming to you very soon. But for now, I will say, see you next time. Goodbye, everyone. These are the performers I know. These are the performers I know. I know. These are the performers I know.